Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week I want to have a look at the back end of the cycle car, how I'm going to get the drive to work, what drive system I'm using and how we get that drive to the wheels. See you in a minute. Right, so I want to have a look today at how I get this thing to be driven. The standard layout for cycle carts, there are exceptions as there are with most things but let's deal with the vast majority. You have a pair of chassis rails which may or may not be braced or will have a monocoque body that will be bracing them apart, whatever. A rear axle generally unsprung <coughs> you have an engine which is generally slightly over or slightly behind the back axle some form of drive either a direct chain through a clutch or a torque converter to the rear axle I'm going for the torque converter and generally one disc brake on that rear axle. It's generally a one inch axle with a keyway in it. Can be bigger, can be smaller, but smaller is less resilient. Now there's a fairly major problem with this. Well, there are many major problems with this, but and it's something that I really hate <coughs> in that mechanically, this is all horribly wrong. On a modern car you have a differential which deals with the fact that when you go around a corner the outer wheel of your car is going an awful lot further than the inner wheel of your car and what actually happens is that the differential means that that wheel is just traveling faster than that wheel not a problem the difficulty comes when you fix both those wheels to that axle and what is going to happen is that that wheel is always trying to fight and go straight ahead and you can see the thing the car just understeers it just goes straight on at a corner or is going to want to tend to do that so I hate this as a principle purely and simply because it's mechanically unsound if you like. You're putting an awful lot of twisting and rotational strain on the joints where the wheel joins the axle, on the keyways, on the spokes of the wheels because you're doing that with the hubs and the wheels, they're fighting and all the while and handling wise it's going to be a bit wrong I don't know this is what probably the majority of the cycle carts do so um, we'll throw that one away for a minute there is a relatively simple fix to that which doesn't involve a great deal of difficulty indeed it looks exactly the same engine brake all you do is disconnect the drive to that wheel so that you've, you're driving on one wheel and the axle and that solves the problem because clearly that wheel is now driving around the outside of the corner that one can do whatever it likes on the inside of a corner because it's not connected in any way shape or form simple answer but that brings about it some other problems when this thing accelerates with this wheel it's going to start trying to do that so 
you're coming to accelerate out of a corner and it's immediately going to start trying to do all sorts of strange things that you don't expect it to do so whilst you may have had handling problems going straight on in corners before you've got handling problems with acceleration with one wheel driven the other problem you have is that you've now only got one brake on one wheel so you're now putting all your braking effort into one wheel which is fine until you're on a bit of grass or a bit of slippery stuff and similarly with the drive you've only got drive on one wheel so yeah you say well we could stick another disc brake on that side on that wheel so that you've doubled you've got back to your two wheel brakes but that's not keeping it simple and it's not adding lightness it's doing just the opposite so that's no good we're going to throw that one away as well now thinking of your normal car next thing we can do is very easy do what you've got on your car we put a differential in the middle which allows the wheels to travel different speeds it doesn't affect the handling on your car or my car or anybody else's car it's what 99% of cars have <coughs> disc brake back but what you've just done is added something complicated so it's no longer simple and you have not added lightness you've added weight so however elegant this is and however much I kept coming back to it and thinking that's got to be the answer that's got to be the answer it solves all the mechanical issues that I don't like it's not going to help you if it's added so much weight or added an amount of weight and complication to the whole setup that means that you become uncompetitive because it doesn't take much in weight to affect a seven and a half horsepower engine so after a lot of thinking and not being happy about it I'm throwing that one away as well now that only leaves me one option as I can see it for a foolproof way of driving the back end of a cart without any of these problems and that is that you get the motor there and you put a wheel there like that and you've got your two wheels at the front one of the first things I looked at in my with my Adrian Newey hat on when I saw all the rules on cycle carts was that I spotted that it said nothing about how many wheels it had to have and in many ways that is the most elegant solution one wheel at the back two at the front it worked well for Morgans in the 1920s and 30s perfect result however I've already got in the garage what is essentially a cycle cart Morgan uh, it's a bit bigger than it would need to be but it, it's already there so I've already been there seen that done that one so I'm not going to do that so what options does that leave me well sadly much against my all my instincts it leaves me with the option of going back to square one doing what everybody else seems to manage to do perfectly happily and survive with perfectly happy and that is to drive both rear wheels with one axle and one disc brake that is keeping it simple and it adds no weight at all or as little weight as I can um, the beauty of having a keyed axle um, is that I can take the key out of the keyway on one side if I want to and 
experiment later on as to what it would be like if you had one wheel driven so you then got the you've got that issue of it trying to push round with one wheel more than the other but then you haven't got probably quite the problem with it wanting to go straight on at the corners that's something i can experiment with later on i, I i've i hate this with <laughs> every fiber of my body but i've read pretty much everybody's build on the uk cycle carts forum most of the ones on the american cycle cart forum although they are generally bigger and heavier and as you would expect more over engineered <coughs> and pretty much generally everybody has come back to this simple arrangement there are all sorts of other arrangements but this is the one that seems to work so that's where we're going um, as i say i don't particularly like it but all these other people can't be all wrong and i don't know enough about them because i've never built one so who am i to say what is wrong and what is right time alone will tell um, and the beauty of it being i won't say modular but very simple like meccano like the whole thing is that it does mean that with a relatively small amount of alteration you can do whatever you like with this i could put a differential in on a separate subframe and build a new back end in very short space of time uh, as i say i can change it from two wheel drive to one wheel drive very quickly so that's the back end resolved i think in the meantime i will go off and order myself an axle a pair of wheels some bearings and the motor and um, drive and worry about how we're going to get the brake sorted probably give a visit to a bike breakers yard or something and see what I can find for that right so today things have finally got real um, we've had two deliveries today about that one which just arrived Converter. Come from Finley Carts eBay site. It's not the Comet one, which is a lot more expensive. This is a Chinese clone, but generally sell them, so at least I know where to go if there's a problem. The cover. belt the clutch unit another pulley I don't know which one goes on the engine find out how all this fits together so that's the first thing we've got that arrived earlier Ooh. 16 kilograms of it that I hope is an engine I'm lazy as well as the pull start 
the wiring loom. And the engine on off switch. That's useful in that I can, it does mean I can mount that on off switch somewhere else and just extend the wiring I think, or I hope. But what I'm anxious to establish really is how all of this fits. I shall be taking off probably the tank, probably the exhaust and the air filter and doing different arrangements so they're not too critical. But I need to know how this output shaft fits in with the drive mechanism. Right, so it's again possible widthways. It looks like it will fit in okay. It's going to be tight, mind you. Um, I'm just about on the limits, but again, those will be coming off. Torque converter should fit. The only thing I'm probably going to run into trouble with is where I'm going to get a disc brake in because I'm running out of room pretty desperately there so that's yeah may well be an issue and it may well be that I've got to either lift the motor up to get something underneath it or I don't know what make the whole body slightly wider I think it's time for a, a back end mock up now rather than a seat mock up and just see how tight we can get this thing packaged so that all the right bits will be at the right height. After a lot of messing around and moving the torque converter around, I think I'm about as close as I'm ever going to get. I've marked out the back fairing shape, and that gives me a, a point to measure verticals that I can see whether or not anything is going to interfere. I'm a little bit tight on the drive from the torque converter there. But otherwise I think I'm about as close as I'm going to get. So I'm just about within to get the motor in that way, all the way down. Yeah, it's a little bit higher than I'd hoped. I might need just to put a little bulge on the side to get round that. Because there's quite a big chunk of torque converter to go back on there. And the drive belt. <coughs> just taking the tank off there are two nuts one here and one here and there's a large bolt around the back which I've loosened the one going in horizontally 
And that releases the tank out from the hose and there's a clip on that that is a spring clip that if you squeeze you can undo it. makes it much more easy to access everything it gives me a lot more room and it means I can just put a separate I'm going to swap the carburetor anyway in time but in the short term it just means I can put a new hose on this one and, and put a tank anyway if I needed to put a pump in I could because I've got 12 volts for the starter that makes it a much nicer package now that's probably a quarter of the size of the engine now. And one thing I've learnt in years of messing around with stuff like this is to keep all the nuts and bolts labelled because otherwise they get mixed up, you forget where they are, you come back to it in six weeks time and you don't know where you put them. So these are life fan manifold exhaust the whole thing's a much better package with that tank off it's much more compact I've managed to get it a little bit further forward I think and if you just line up those two bits of batten there you can see the extent of the problem I've got with a housing on the side um, I think that'll be out slightly further anyway but it really isn't a, a massive issue. It's bearing in mind it's behind the wheel anyway. And to have some sort of a bulge or a cover over that is not going to be the end of the world. So here's the sort of dilemma I've got, the conflict about the back end, because it is very, very small and it tapers. If I go with the TAV which I'm doing the sort of automatic gearbox um, there are a limited number of positions you can put that in to make it work and at best I'm going to end up with something sticking out the side if I'm not careful if I go there if I go above everything is in the way so that may, would mean I would have to clock it that way and move the engine backwards and the minute I move the engine backwards it starts to cause even more problems there. That is smaller than a 70 tooth sprocket so you can see I can't go any further forward with things because it's going to hit the back of the bulkhead and essentially that's where the biggest problem is lying. Right, so that's got me, I don't know, eight or nine tenths of the way towards getting the, the back end resolved. Um, it's difficult, I think, however much I try working with the mock-up to fully understand how it's all going to fit together, but at least I've got pretty much a good idea of, of how I'm going to do it. And I know um, how much more room I'm going to need if I do have to stretch things a bit it, it's difficult to look at it on paper and say oh I could make it 25 mil an inch wider or something uh, and you don't necessarily know how that's going to work out but when you've got the mock up there and you can draw a new line on where the tail would be if it were 20 mil wider all the way around and you can instantly see how much more room you've got um, it is small at the back and I will continue to keep working at the problem just to see if we can come up with any other solutions that are better but at least you know it's going to fit one way or another so we can move on start and think about the next thing on the list so i hope it was of interest look forward to seeing you next time we'll move on to something different i hope i'll see you then bye, bye.